Here, uh, I'll go through what are the basic changes which happen um, during from fetal life to the neonatal life. Take it. Basically, when the baby is born, prior to birth, baby's alveoli are filled with water or al liquid, amniotic fluid. Take it. Then post delivery, they expand. Okay, this is the this is the thing which we uh, focus on. Okay, they expand and fill with air. So this is the most important thing. So pul pulmonary blood vessel vessels which are closed. Okay, uh, they have high pressures prior to delivery. High pressures. Once the air, once the alveoli open, the pulmonary pressure, pulmonary pressure decreases. The second most important thing which happens. Uh, during delivery is we clamp the umbilical cord. Okay, so umbilical cord, how does the blood flow? I just see. Yeah, how does the blood flow? Uh, um, umbilical artery and umbilical vein, right? Umbilical artery removes the blood, means uh, takes away the blood for oxygenation, oxygenation into the mother through the placenta and umbilical vein provides provides blood directly to the left left heart take it directly to the left heart through foramen oval okay oxygenated blood now once we clamp umbilical cord see these two two umbilical arteries and umbilical vein once they are clamped there isn't any blood supply from the placenta to the baby so the high blood pressure which is due to the blood supply from the mother decreases okay uh, this decreases so hence the pressure from the on the right side decreases and the blood the blood which flows through the umbilical art, uh, umbilical artery to the mother again is clamped so hence here the blood pressure increases so the left side which was on the lower blood pressure side and uh, the right side which was on higher side reverses so here what happens the right the right heart blood pressure decreases and the left side increases. So here, due to the changes in blood pressure, this foramen oval closes, okay? So there isn't any blood flow from the right side to the left side because high blood, usually blood flows from the higher blood pressure to the lower blood pressure. But here, as the blood pressure is higher on this side and the flap is on to the left side, the high blood pressure pushes this foramen oval wall towards the uh, uh, septum secundum, no, no, septum primum, and then closes the foramen oval. So hence, there isn't any blood flow. And this is the second change. So, so these two changes causes the further changes. So what are the other changes we expect? So we have discussed the pulmonary blood vessels. They expand, the resistance decreases. The systemic blood vessels, the pressure decreases. Okay, pressure increases. Sorry, the systemic blood pressure increases. The ductus arteriosus, which is very sensitive to the oxygen. Oxygen. Once the baby starts breathing, the ductus arteriosus closes functionally immediately. Say within 10 minutes, within a minute, it closes functionally, though not anatomically. Okay, so the functional closure of ductus arteriosus immediately happens because of oxygen. Okay, high oxygen because intrauterine the oxygen uh, status of the baby is usually on the hypo hypo oxygenation. Say sixty percent is only oxygen is oxygenated. Okay, postnatal it is it comes slowly towards the hundred percent side. So ductus arteriosus closes. And for Ramen Oval, I have already explained. Okay. So, so now we know what is the focus of neonatal resuscitation. It is ventilation of the baby's lung. So anticipate. Now, once you are called to the call for a uh, delivery, so we have to first ask what are the risk factors. Okay. So whether the baby is, uh, what is the gestational age? Less than thirty six. Uh, weeks or more than that okay then any antenatal risk factors like uh, eclampsia preeclampsia maternal hypertension multiple gestation fetal anemia okay then any polyhydromnias oligohydromnias 
So these are the risk factors. Uh, fetal hydrops, macrosomia, intrauterine growth retardation, restriction, okay? Then any fetal malformations, means uh, we do antenatal uh, uh, scans, so any fetal malformations expected. Then if it is an emergency delivery, emergency cesarean section, what is the reason for it, okay? So any sudden shoot in blood pressure or sudden derangement in uh, diabetic control, these are the factors which are premature rupture of membrane, all these things, okay? Then forceps or any vacuum assisted delivery, breach delivery. Then what is the uh, fetal heart rate pattern? Okay, CTG we do. In what is the fetal heart rate pattern? If it is category one, then it is okay. But if it is category and category three, two or three, we need to be prepared. Okay. Then maternal general anesthesia, magnesium therapy, placental abruption. Here we expect blood loss. Fetal side blood loss or intrapartum bleeding, any choreomnonitis, opioids as we have discussed, so, shoulder dystocia. Because if it is so, shoulder dystocia, then it is a difficult uh, delivery. Okay, so there, there might we might lose some amount of time. So any so, shoulder dystocia, meconium stain liquor or prolapsed umbilical cord. So these are the antenatal, we antenatal risk factors which we have to anticipate and ask the uh, attending doctor or the gynecologist to anticipate any further resuscitation from our side. 